All right, welcome back everyone. Beautiful fall day today. They're expecting snow over the next couple of days, so I thought we'd get some stuff done outside. And one of the projects that had to get done was uh, changing the seals on some of the cylinders on my excavator. Uh, this summer we bought a mini excavator for various projects around the property, so I bought a Bobcat 322D, found a good used one on Kijiji, and uh, seems to be a good unit, except for the fact that uh, the person that I bought it off of uh, owned a landscaping company that went bankrupt or went out of business for uh, a couple of years ago, and this sat idle for uh, two years in a field. And uh, it runs, and it runs great, but the seals had gone bad and dried and cracked, and after a bit of use, they uh, started to leak. So the project is to replace the seals. So glad you could join us. We hope that you enjoy this video, and we're going to get started. So this is uh, the Bobcat unit that we bought, a 2003 322D series. It is considered a one and a half to three ton, or actually just about two tons, 38, 50 pounds, dry, beautiful little unit. I bought it, it had a lot of scrapes and a little bit of rust on there, so I sanded it down, took the decals off, so on and so forth, painted it, some trim clad black and trim clad white, bought a new decal package, and it looks pretty good. Uh, I bought it with 1,298 hours, but having sat for two years, all the seals in the cylinders are starting to leak, and uh, we experienced that after putting a few hours on there. Yesterday's project was the arm cylinder, so uh, that went well. Um, two hour project took six, but uh, hey, you gotta learn somehow. So today's project is the bucket cylinder. And I've already got it off. Bit of advice if you're new to this, and the pros are probably laughing at me, but uh, yeah, have something to catch the oil. And a lot of rags, because uh, you can get covered in oil pretty quick, which I did. At any rate, we got the cylinder off pretty easy. You might have to uh, persuade the pins to come out. Now they say you can do it on the machine, but uh, being a novice, I thought it would be better to be working on a bench. So I've got it off. It'll also allow me to check the bushings and uh, for the bucket and all the pins and all the grease fittings, so on and so forth. Just a bit of learning and a bit of maintenance. So let's get to uh, redoing the cylinder. All right, so uh, lost the film or the footage for taking the cylinder apart, but it's pretty easy. So this part here screws into the cylinder end here. So using the tried and tested uh, method of uh, lefty loosey righty tighty, uh, you just take this off. Now this housing is aluminum, so you have to be a bit careful, but I purchased a large uh, uh, channel locks and that seems to work fine. You can buy a special tool for it. But uh, here we have the ram portion of the rod and this bolt has to come off and uh, looking at all the videos on YouTube, seems to be uh, quite, the, quite the task. People using four foot breaker bars and all kinds of things like that. So yesterday I tried the four foot breaker bar and uh, I'll show you what I did instead. At any rate, so these seals have to be replaced. This seal, just a simple O-ring. And inside this, and I'll show you this in a bit, there are two other seals which are a bit tricky. And uh, other than that, getting the bolt off I think is the hardest part. So let's get to that. So it pays to take pictures of everything you're doing if you're not familiar with uh, the sequence that they go back on. But uh, this little um, edge of this piece that comes off should be always pointing towards the uh, cylinder or the rod actually after the nut comes off just as a reference for when you're putting it back together. So yesterday uh, I was reefing on the nut on the uh, other cylinder and uh, the factory sends these nuts with a bit of a kind of a Loctite in the threads already so it uh, doesn't come off and I'm sure that's the reason why it doesn't come off. Uh, good, good reason too, you don't want that loosening off and ending up in the cylinder. So I have a 15 inch crescent wrench, adjustable wrench with a breaker bar that I fashioned out of a piece of square tube and I'm going to heat the nut up a little bit. Now you don't want to go too hot because you don't want to break the temper on the metal, but uh, just hot enough to get the nut a little bit larger that it'll come off easy. And uh, again, caution because you're in and around greasy and oily stuff. Don't, uh, don't let the flame go too close to uh, burnable items or flammable items. You don't want your shop burning down. So uh, let's heat it up and get that nut off. So if you've got a bench with a uh, good vise in here, uh, you just put the 
end of the rod in there, clamp it down as tight as you can, making sure that uh, you've got it fastened to the table, of course, quite nicely. I put a piece of 2x4, scrap 2x4 underneath there so that uh, when you're reefing on this thing, it kind of puts a little bit of pressure on the 2x4. Uh, yeah, so uh, next step is to get that nut off. So with a little bit of heat, it came off pretty good. And uh, you can see it's still uh, kind of smoking away there. So we'll just let that cool down and uh, carry on with the next step. So the idea is now we're gonna take this nut off. This piece will slide off and this piece will also slide all the way off and then you can access the seals on the inside of that piece. All right, so we've got it off. It's cooled off for a bit here and you can kind of see in the threads here that there's a blue thread lock. Now, I don't know if that was the factory, not that they put on or if it's been replaced, but um, I would suggest that if you're going to reuse the nut that you uh, put either blue or red uh, thread lock on there and uh, just to make sure that it doesn't come off in the future. So the nut on the left is the one that came off of uh, the existing and the one on the right is the one that came with the seal kit. Now, I don't know if all seal kits come with the nuts, but um, this one has a factory applied thread lock on the inside, as you can see there, it's red or orange, and uh, that'll help the nut from coming off uh, in the future. So this is uh, the piece that slides back and forth on the, on the rod, and uh, it was leaking a little bit. Now, you can see that uh, the seals have to be replaced. Now, I don't think that this one uh, necessarily stops the fluid from getting underneath here and coming out on this end but uh, you can see that either it wasn't installed properly and got caught as it got went back on and got uh, kind of wrecked as it went in but this has to be replaced and again spacer towards this end and uh, we'll get that replaced we'll slide this off and we'll look at the seals on the inside so these are the two seals on the inside of the uh, the cap here this one here just cleans all the crap off of the rod as it's sliding in and out, keeping the dirt from the inside of the cylinder. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's another cylinder or a seal on the inside here which uh, actually holds the fluid back, which generates the pressure to move the rod back and forth. So uh, a little tricky to get these in and out. The top one is not so hard. It's the one on the inside that's a little hard. Now I guess there's a special tool that uh, the professionals use, but uh, there are techniques of getting that in. Not fun, but it is doable. So you want to be careful with uh, getting these seals out. You don't want to uh, mar the aluminum on the inside so that there's little ridges that will scratch your rod, which of course will lead to uh, seal failure again. So um, now the idea is to clean the inside as best as possible with a clean rag and uh, reinsert the, the new seals. So the inner seal is the trickiest of them all. I couldn't find any information finally found one video that said uh, how to install these and still wasn't very helpful but the helpful note is that you see this little lip on this seal this has to be towards the fluid side so it has to be right in here this way so this edge has to be towards the fluid now getting it in there hopefully the the video of course you can see that it is uh, 
larger than the opening so you have to kind of squish it down and somehow manipulate it in there so hopefully uh, the video that I take does it justice okay well here it goes it's not pretty but uh, here we go so you got to kind of force it into the groove and kind of shove it as best you can and then kind of force it into the clip and it kind of pops into place now that went relatively easy believe me the first time <laughs> that uh, took forever to figure out but it kind of snaps in place just make sure that uh, it's seated properly and again that little lip is towards the fluid side the next one is the same now you'll see a little ridge here now this little ridge right here is what scrapes all the dirt off of the rod and uh, so that just clips into this little groove groove here real easy again you got to kind of force it into place and it'll snap right in place and it's as easy as that or at least this time it was easy all right so the outer seals are pretty simple you just break them off and uh, this one was broken already and this little o-ring here you can just fish off Spacer. And then you put them on in the same order. You can just roll the O-ring right to the back. Make sure it goes all the way in. Next goes the spacer. Now these spacers are not as pliable as the other ones, but uh, they'd stretch a little bit, so you gotta be a little bit careful you don't overstretch it. And then the new O-ring. And that is all the seals on this portion. So the next, so the last seals we have to do is on uh, the ram portion of the cylinder. So there's two in here, there is a kind of like a uh, a cylinder ring and an o-ring that's underneath it so we'll break these out and then put these on now word of caution these um, don't stretch very well so you got to be a little bit careful you don't overstretch them and uh, but they got to get on there somehow and I think they they go back to their original size but uh, we'll fish that off separate off camera all right well it's not the easiest thing to get on but first I put it on to this uh, shallower ridge here and then I kind of worked it on to the end and then you just kind of snap it in place and then what I was saying is that this seal kind of needs to be manipulated back into place and now it'll it'll eventually go back to its original original size after it uh, uh, So this piece has to be pointing towards the end of the rod and you just carefully put it over the edge and work it on and you can see that it slides relatively easy, nice and firm. You can see it's already scraping some of the residue oil off. So the next piece is uh, this here and this sits against this area here like so and then we'll put the nut back on that came with the seal kit. And then we'll tighten up that nut and then put the cylinder back on. All right, well, everything is back together. And uh, just as a visual reference, I found that all the videos that I watched never did this. So the cylinder piece the, that gets screwed into the cylinder with uh, the threads pointing towards the top of the rod, we've cinched down the nut and uh, gave it a good tug with a breaker bar. And now we're going to uh, slide the uh, cylinder back on carefully so that we don't ruin any seals. and. Uh, 
we'll uh, call this done, get it back on the excavator. All right, well, I won't uh, bore you with how I get this all back on, but you can see that the hoses are sitting there hanging, and uh, once the pins are back in place and I've checked the fittings and the bushings and cleaned it up a little bit, getting the excess old grease out of the place, then we'll uh, get the cylinder up and running, connect it, and get the bucket back on and get it running. So, um, yeah, I guess we're almost near the end. All right, well, that concludes today's video. We got all the cylinders back in place and all the seals replaced, at least on two of the cylinders. One I have the parts for, but it's not leaking yet, so I figure uh, why fix what's not broken. So we have it in case it does start leaking, but uh, we had a good time doing it and I learned a lot and hope you did too. And uh, if you found this video helpful, we would love it if you would subscribe, like and share and join us again for another video coming soon. Thanks for watching.